Hey guys, it's me, Fox. Welcoming to the second episode of the Epic CNC upgrade. So far it looks like I might have enough content for the whole season. Um, today I'll be making two Y-axis super rigid modules for my CNC. I will show you the whole process of making this Y-axis uh, module for my CNC. And this is for you as a reference scale. In this season, I will try to explain everything as best as I can, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, because of it, uh, the amount of content which I already recorded, it's uh, huge. And that's why this episode will have two parts and this is the part number one. So I hope you're gonna find it useful and you enjoy it. Here you can see the remaining parts for the Epic upgrade. They just arrived. So I have uh, a ground ball screws THK new ground ball screw THK used but couldn't find anything else motor mounts z-axis it's a linear roller guide a linear roller guide for the X I will use the Rex Roth uh, for the Y but uh, let's take a closer look so well, here I have uh, SYK BK15 ball screw mount here I have a Sway K ball screw mount for the motor mount. So it goes here and, uh, and the motor goes here. The part number is uh, SYK MBA 15D. Okay, then I have um, SYK MGD 25. Here I have IKO linear roller guides. Uh, it's a 20 size for my z-axis they're really really nice for my x-axis I have um, size 25 roller guides the name which I cannot pronounce um, I'm really happy for the roller guides um, but that one is a bit off I can feel a bit of vibrations that one goes smooth that one goes smooth and that one is smooth as well. Ground bolt screws, 25, 25, and 20, I think. And uh, yeah, that one has a bit bulky bolt screw. Uh, that one is a uh, bigger size, but the smaller bolt screw, and that one is smaller size, but the bigger bolt screw. Uh, yeah, I, whoops. <laughs> I wanted to show you the proper way to make a lock nuts. This one has um, two grub screws on the corners and then it has a um, copper insert. So when you tighten the lock nut, you won't destroy the thread on the ball screw. I really, really like it. And, and they, uh, they really well made, I have to say. It's all machined and uh, it's not aluminum. It's just blackened steel. And same with this, it's uh, all milled really nicely. That's the that's a cast, um, but that that part is milled, and it fits uh, the motor mount really nice. The motor mount is also uh, precision made. All the motor mounts uh, come with the calibration certificates, and usually this is what I thought. It's like they have one certificate and they print the same thing for all the parts and they send it to a client. But opening one by one, I kind of realized that the numbers are different. So that's not really a fake uh, calibration certificate. It's the, actually the proper. So here you have, uh, I don't know, uh, eccentricity, nine microns, mm, perpendicularity, two microns, then Another one, seven microns, 14 microns, four microns, one micron, eight microns, five, one. The length, it's like seven microns over, seven microns over, and three microns over. So I would say it's uh, very well made. So I definitely recommend those uh, to mount your servos. And you can get them for steppers as well. So don't you worry. All the parts I got from two sources. Uh, one is DUI Global on eBay. He's selling used parts and new parts. And then the other one, it's the Max Tenso 
uh, he has a store on AliExpress. Um, he was very, very helpful with uh, sourcing all of the stuff I needed. Even if I couldn't find the stuff on his website, he was able to provide it somehow. I will put all the information in the video description so you can take a look at it later. Now I want to take a closer look uh, to see the differences between the ground ball screw and regular ball screw, which is the rolled one. So this is rolled ball screw, uh, size 16. I hope you can see it. And this is a ground uh, ball screw, size 25 with the pitch 10. I couldn't find the uh, pitch 5 on that length and I just had to buy something so I went for this one. Here is the close-up on the uh, groove of the ground ball screw. So the finish is uh, quite precise I would say. And now let's go to uh, roll the ball screw. I think it looks a bit rougher not as uh, precise. You see all of the lines from being uh, squeezed or rolled and I guess those lines are not helping with the precision or vibrations. And it's not very uniform. There is much more imperfections and deviations in the rolled ball screws than the ground ones because here you are pretty much squeezing the metal outward and with the ground one, you're just cutting it off. So that's way more precise way of making the ball screws. Right, and go back to a ground ball screw. So I guess you can see the difference, right? Here I have my Y-axis uh, roughly placed with my uh, servo from Motion Control Products. Thank you very much for it. So my sidewall in the CNC is uh, more or less 64, 60, it's hard to measure at the moment. It's uh, 64 and a half centimeters, I think. So 645 millimeters. Um, and, um, if I attach uh, the motor mount to the granite base, then I will have that much screw sticking out and um, no place how to bolt it into it. Um, then the other thing is that uh, I don't really want uh, for the ball screw to go to the very end because, uh, you know, if you have any misalignment, far away the angle is very small but as close you get to the the center of the rotation then this misalignment will bend your screw i'm not planning to have any misalignments but i'm just prefer to play safe here i'm gonna put it on aluminium plate and assemble it on the plate you know precisely because you know that rotation here rotation here any you know placements it's kind of lots of axis to be honest and I want to get once I assemble that thing on the plate I can get it into a CNC and bolt it in so I will do most of the job outside of CNC and once all ready I can just go and bolt it in just yeah I'll quickly mock up uh, what I have it planned so that will go here in my current CNC, I have a plate which is like this and it's bolted uh, to the sidewall and that plate, that wasn't a very brilliant idea because that plate, when you put more force into it, it just tries to detach from the machine. And uh, I figured it out if I'm gonna bolt it to the single plate, it will still try to bend that way, but the angle of a band will be much smaller. I'm gonna put two 10 millimeter plates, so it will be 20 millimeter thick up to here, and I'm gonna bolt it in those places to the machine. That shouldn't flex much. I'm gonna put uh, sidewalls in here. And in here. 
like that. And I'm gonna bolt it from outside in. It will make this plate more rigid, um, so it won't, you know, twist, flex and stuff. I mean, it still will twist and flex, but, you know, in microns, I would guess. And now I will do some rough measurements to see what goes where and to visualize uh, better what to do in the fusion. And let's go and cut it. We are in my dirty section where I cut stuff and never clean. Okay, so let's cut it. Uh, somewhere here to save the line. Yep. Okay, and I'm gonna use my cutting spray. Okay. Okay. And now uh, here. Okay, so all my bits are cut, so that plate will go here, this plate will go here, and the ball screw with the mount goes here, precisely, and here looks like I have one millimeter spare. More or less, yep, should be good. Um, maybe I cut it too short, but uh, we'll do anyway. Um, the sides go here, and the other one in here. Yes, and now I have to more or less mark the holes. So I can take some measurements and I think I'm gonna put a screw or a bolt in uh, here to attach to a CNC here, here and uh, that's the limit. So anyway, just in case maybe here and here so I should have a lot of clearance maybe maybe here so when the bull when the screw it's like that big I'm planning to use M8s that should do it so when the when I move too far for some unknown reason which I shouldn't it's clear okay yep that should be good um, what else and then I will have to bolt uh, with uh, some smaller screws those two plates top and the bottom uh, I guess I will, I will add here and here and definitely underneath some country song M4s or something just to help it stay together I'm really hoping for that part like from here to there to be solid two centimeter aluminium uh, because it's bolted here so you know can't flex much really and the back I don't know it's not really that important definitely screw here screw here I guess maybe here here shish and then two here that's a bit excessive um hmm yeah, I have to bolt it to mill it uh maybe one in here one in here 
something like that. And now I'll go to the Fusion 360, get the rough measurements and do some designing work for it. Um, for my design, I just wanted to check uh, the difference in height uh, of this whole assembly here and here. So I measured the distance from the straight edge to the bottom of the bolt screw and from the straight edge to the bottom of the screw. And it looks like it's pretty much identical. Then I thought once I have it on the straight edge, I can check if there is any bow in the bolt screw. Turns out that there is. So when I turn a bolt screw, it goes from 4 to minus 4 pretty much. And 4 to minus 4. But you can see the wobble, right? So I'm gonna go in reverse again. Um, I'm gonna get the highest spot, which is here. And if you put your finger on it and you put a bit of a force, trying to figure it out how much I'm putting to bend it back to zero, it um, I think would be around one kilogram or one and a half maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe one and a half. I'm gonna get the block. The weight of that is uh, 1.2 kilograms. Yeah, around 25 microns, uh, under 1.2 kilograms or 1.3. Yeah, we have two kilograms wobble in it. I hope the rails will dampen it. The other bolt screw, it's only 20 microns off. It's a 20 microns bow, so, you know, 10 microns one way and 10 microns the other way to straighten it up. And for 10 microns, I don't think I need much force at all. Okay, so I came up with uh, something like that. That's the amount of holes um, I came up with. And uh, the side holes are going, I think you can see here, are going in between everywhere. So the coverage should be pretty good and it should be quite strong from the, from the side and from the bottom. So it should be pretty much a solid piece of aluminium. Uh, here and here, um, I had the plan to face um, motor mounts. Um, but uh, my machine, it's short by, um, I think like three centimeters. So I can't do that. So I'm gonna ditch that, that idea of making the motor mounts because um, I can do more damage than any good because, you know, you can just make it worse. Um, the plate, the thickness, it's pretty much identical. They're gonna be screwed really tight. So there will be maybe up to five microns of variation. That's not really important on that distance. And when I'm gonna put that thing into the machine, then I'm gonna be adjusting left, right, up and down, right? And all the angles. So I just want that ball screw to be as a one unit, which is, you know, rigid and then anything. And then I can, you know, rotate it left and right. Yeah, you, you could do something like this by hand. You don't have to use the CNC. Like my current CNC, I use the drop saw and, uh, you know, dr drill press to, to do most of the work. But, you know, now I'm just looking for something, you know, slightly nicer and more precise. Let's cut. So I'm trimming the, the ends now.
I'm not entirely sure how excited can we get watching holes. Well, maybe you could actually, but never mind. Um, the finish, uh, I think it's good. And for the end of the ball screw, I have to equalize the length uh, of those two pieces. So you're the, they are the same. And, you know, basically I don't want to cut them all the way around. Um, or, you know, have them in the vise and do too many operations. So I'm just gonna cut them to the same length. Uh, so my idea is to put one... Okay, that one is longer, so I have to cut a bit more from this one. Like this, and here. That should be good enough. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna do one pass on that side, then on the other side, then I'm gonna get them together, put them in a vise and face them. And that should do it. And go. Okay. Now the sides are flat uh, and perpendicular to the you know, the that side. Undo this. Okay. And then. And now I can uh, trim. All of them. So I'm gonna take the minimum uh, of this one, and that will follow. Okay, that should be enough. Okay, there. Go. Just gonna face it all at once. So here is my secret weapon, and it's a router bit for wood. And you will see what happens when I'm gonna cut all of them at once. And let's go. No coolant or anything. It's a, it's mirror finish. Let's see the reflection. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it just reflects stuff. Um, I have my blocks in the vise. I will be cutting this one and indicate on this corner. And that one just works as a spacer. So I'm gonna indicate back, side and the top. I need to plug the probe. Okay. To probe the stock from the left, I just click select, then I move it and click from the back. It's good. And it's automatically resetting to half of the size of the tool. And now I'm gonna raise it up and uh, and start from the top. So set Z 
so it goes automatically, touches, cool. And the Z I'm resetting manually. I'm gonna give it a wash. So I'm making a two sides at once. Um, nice chamfer and uh, now I'm gonna now swap them and cut the other one and now it's time for the long plates so I'm gonna use two parallels in the middle vise and I trimmed uh, the ends uh, of the camera because you know, that was a bit too boring um, and I'm gonna put it in here unfortunately this is a bit too long and I can't do it in, in one operation so I'm gonna start exactly with the vise so when I do another one I don't have to indicate it anymore so to make it uh, precise I'm just gonna use a parallel and press it Yes, it's uh, dead on. <coughs> now I'm gonna lock the. I'm putting the pressure in the middle vise. And I'm gonna lock it tight. And now I'm gonna lock this one. And uh, the angle here, it's not too important because those are just the holes, uh, which they're gonna be tapped later on. Uh, <clears throat> but I can whack it so it's, so it's not completely off. Okay. Yeah, it's still precisely there. I'm gonna indicate this corner here using the my method so I'm gonna do it like this uh, so I'm gonna indicate from that side that side and the top Again, I'm trying to get to hit the that with the edge of uh, end wheel. That's done. Now I'm gonna do the top. Okay, top is done. And now the back. Uh, perfect. <clears throat> Let's drill some holes.
I'm packing to break the chips um, and because it's 9000 rpm I don't need to have a pilot hole it's that on center it, the, the enemy doesn't wander because I'm packing I don't have a long uh, chips getting wrapped around the drill I will have to flip this like that and drill the other holes from the bottom so I'm gonna take that end put in here um, and exactly with the, with the end of the vise I don't even have to re-indicate the starting position just put it there and start drilling holes from the other side start Well, with this harsh cut, I want to let you know that we are at the end of the part one, but no worries, the adventures will continue in uh, part two. And what could I say more? Um, I guess I've said enough. See you next time.